What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nudge Jet Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, you sent me this Variety article. As I was reading this, I was not surprised. Perhaps I patted, I patted myself on the back a few times, like... This is nothing new to us, but Variety came out with an article uh, yesterday and it's titled From Batgirl Fallout to Rebooting Superman, All the Landmines Facing the Next DC Chief. Brian, we got to break this down. First, a name popped up when I while I was reading this article, a name popped up and he popped up last uh, discussion that we had perhaps a few others, I don't know. Um, but it was in another Variety article. And it was Dan Lin, whom was, uh, I don't know, he was producing with George Miller for the Justice League uh, Mortal movie that they were adapting from Tower of Babel, Do uh, Justice League Doom, which would have been dope. Um, his name has been popping up for the possible a uh, uh, individual that will be the, their sort of Kevin Feige. Also, another name that I found interesting, Brian, Emma, Emma Watts. I'll tell you why this, 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 I'm just thinking as a, I'm just trying to think perhaps as they would because of the heat that they're taking. Right? So, those two names, but Dan Lin, Brian, talk to me about Dan, Dan Lin and why this is a very interesting uh, possibility here. Well, it would be, as you said, the number one thing is the irony that the producer of the Justice League movie that was that never was, would somehow then, you know, over a decade later, become the shepherd of all things DC going forward. Now, it sounds like there's been, there's enough, smoke here that there's clearly been talks and there's clearly some mutual interest it does sound complicated to me um dan lynn is not just sort of any old producer he has his own production company and that production company has relationships with studios not named warner brothers so there apparently is some real messiness in terms of his ability to extract Kind of from the projects he's currently working on that might be promised to other studios and thereby free him to actually go work for warner brothers so as a result this seems like a warm rumor but it's not like a searing hot one yet because it does seem like there's some hurdles to get this over the finish line but it you know as, as you said it, it kind of fits the idea of like i don't think David Zasloff would hire a total rookie. You know, he was clearly going to put someone in the seat who at least had some production chops, it, be it in the genre or not. And Dan Lin, we, we, we bring up George Miller's Justice League, but it's not like he's a comics guy. You know, we talked about Michael DeLuca, who had done a few comics movies, but he had done all kinds of movies. So that seems to be the direction they're going, more so than, you know, what I would have been recommending which is go after a parliament person who was like immersed in the genre they don't seem to be looking in that direction they want somebody who's more holistic um but i do think it's interesting and this may tie to your discussion of emma watts that obviously this would mean officially as we know and we've been telling you for months that walter hamada is not going to last past his current contract but you know walter hamada is rare in the sense that you have you have an executive of asian descent in that high profile of a role and dan lynn all of a sudden <laughs> fits that mold as well so i mean who knows if that's if that's a factor but um it does seem like there's some real progress here uh, and at least of all the leads we've heard this one feels the most concrete even more so than like the berlanti talk and some of the stuff which felt a little more flimsy, this one feels a little more real. The Emma Stone one. 
Then so what? I say the, Dan, the Dan Lin one, and then, then the idea that that I would say based on variety sourcing that Emma Watts probably has been talked to as well. And what what are her credentials? What what why are they looking at her? Um Paramount. That's where she's from. Okay. So and she would have been at Paramount back in the day when Paramount had a co-production uh credit actually on some of the Marvel properties. If you remember way back in the day, like Iron Man One, if you look at the logos, there's a Paramount logo beside because Marvel Studios didn't exist yet. So like original Deadpool, some of the X-Men franchises, there's a Paramount credit in there. So that's her ties to the to the industry that she was at Paramount as their, I think their president while those while those relationships and movies were being made. Okay. So let's get into the hurdles that the article describes here. Number one, dealing with the fallout from the Batgirl cancellation. Brian, I called it from get that they were going to be, okay, the tax credit thing, but they were going to look at, you know, you know, her being a Latina. And then after that, canceling other, you know, diverse shows that were apparently popular. And now they're trying to, I, I believe they asked Leslie Grace if she would want to return as Batgirl. I, I think she said no, whatever. I think she, you know, they, this is, I guess right now it's negotiation. Now now we, we turn it into negotiation. You want me, how much do you want? You well, know what I I'm think saying? the Variety article expanded this to say they are try, they are desperately trying to get Leslie Grace into another project. So that okay. doesn't mean Batgirl to me. That kind of means... Leslie, what would you like to do? Yeah. That's what that sounds like to me. And the directors too, right? The directors of Bad Boys for Life. They're like, what, what other projects do you guys working on? We'd love to produce those for you. What, 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 what would you do, Brian, in that situation? Now that you have, I guess, whatever it is you want to do, pretty much, let's make this happen. I mean, that's an opportunity, right? Like nobody really gets just like that. I mean, it is, but I guess my, I would be telling my agent, use them as leverage and basically be like, this is the project I want made, make your best offer, and then shop that offer down the street. And if another studio matches it or betters it, don't give it to WB, give it to them. Yeah. And you yeah. get your money and you get your project and you don't have to give it to Warners. You can give them, give them the finger. Like <laughs> I, I, I think create, it's not that creatives won't work with them, but I think for this studio to lurch from the same day streaming bomb that they dropped on the industry in 2021 to now have this the next year. Yeah. I mean, this studio, it, you know, the, the reputation, the reputational capital with directors, producers, artists, it's oh, low yeah. on a relative basis. How is it not? And, I, and just recently you sent me an article legendary they're out yeah they're, they're out godzilla <laughs> uh chris nolan movies like super actually back in the day they were they were on some of the superman man of steel like they're out that production group is leaving warner brothers time for young guns time to really search for the the the, the, the new kids on the block anyway Regarding that hurdle with Batgirl and the cancellation and all the diverse shows are getting canceled, whatever the case may be, the, the interesting move would be to get Emma Watts, a female, right? They can make things interesting with that choice. That's just a thought. I agree. I'm, and I'm pretty sure they're thinking about it. I don't think there's any question about that. I think you're 100% right. The next one. Managing ongoing and unconnected film and TV projects. Ryan, the only ones you and I think that, you know, that we care about are the Batman, 
the the Batman universe that Matt Reeves is doing. That's the only that's I think that's the only thing I really care about. What do you care about on other than the Batman? What what do you care about in terms of continuing forward Blue Beetle or any 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 others? So there's something that's happened on the Matt Reeves front that we we're missing a puzzle piece. Um, didn't get a lot of press, but I sent you, there were some rumblings about David Zaslav and Matt Reeves having some issues because Matt Reeves had pitched his bat verse similar to Todd Phillips Joker verse as this standalone entity that was not going to connect the mainstream storyline and the prior regime was cool with that because they were fine with having four Batman and three Superman. Like they had all that, that was their, they were in the mode of, we need to make HBO max max out. We need HBO max to compete with Disney, compete with Netflix. So we're going to put maximum content up on that service. And if that means five Superman and eight Batman, we don't care. David Zaslav's running this back to the 19, 1980s and nineties, right? It's like, we're doing this traditional, we're doing this one way. And there were these low level rumblings that like he and Reeves were at odds because Zaslav said, I want one unified 10 year plan. And we know that Reeves is kind of like, I don't really want to be part of some collective. I just want to do my thing. Literally 24 hours after those stories hit, an official release went out. Matt Reeves signs multi-year first look deal with Warner Brothers. Something went down. I'm telling you, a trade was made. I, if you see Pattinson become like the central Batman of some linked universe, then you will know that they paid Matt Reeves that production deal to get him to buy in and basically lend his Batverse to the broader universe. I'm just on the lookout for something now because the timing of this is not coincidental in my mind. And they could not, could not, afford to lose him yeah. considering that right now he is the only sure thing they have at dc but i repeat aquaman 2 is not a sure thing don't tell me that's a sure thing i know i made a billion dollars last time we're hearing problems there we know flash is not a sure thing it's gonna don't be tell funny me black adam's a sure, don't tell me black adam's a sure thing don't tell me wonder woman's a sure thing after wonder woman 2 was a disappointment the only sure thing they have is the batman and what he's doing which means he has the leverage in that negotiation. Yeah. And I wonder what was said and what was had because something went down. And I bet you we find out next couple months. Listen, I wouldn't mind Matt Reeves' Batverse to do its own thing. And again, Brian, and this is something I mentioned in the last show that we did. I wouldn't mind doing a different Batman for that Justice League world. Do it. Who cares? You know how many Batmans we've gotten? Who cares? Do that world. Do it dope. Do it in that. And give us a, a, a different Batman. I'm telling you, that, that, that dude, Alan Richardson, would be Richardson or Richardson? Richardson. Richardson. Yeah. Richardson. It'd be perfect, Bruce Wayne. But. So I'm with you on this. I actually think the way Reeves has structured Pattinson's arc as Batman, it would be a colossal mistake to involve him in a Justice League project. That Batman is nowhere near the stage of Batman's career where he would be in the Justice League. Not a chance. That's year two Batman. Yeah, like, yeah. Year two Batman's not a member of the Justice League. Year two Batman's not building the Watchtower. Like, he's not. Like, that's a, your choices for that are a prime Batman, a slightly past prime Batman. That's kind of the range where I think Justice League Batman makes the most sense. You might even be able to get away with Batman beyond older Bruce Wayne if you really wanted to kind of maybe turn Batman into like, he's more the technology, you know, kind of provider and the strategist versus that. You could even do that. Cause you got Keaton, Michael Keaton sitting right there, apparently waiting to work. Give that dude $20 million instead of go to town. Give that dude $20 million and that's it, call it a day. I Michael think Keaton don't care. 
I think really audiences agree. because they're they're so different in the timeline of Batman that I don't think they really compete. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, listen. I don't need to know about his. Oh, there's so many things that we already know about Batman that we don't need to go there. We just need him to be Batman. That's all I need him to be. Is Batman. Dope quotes, dope sayings that he disappears, dope stuff. Bat, the stuff that Batman does. That's what I want. I do want the. I do. I, I will say, it. I do want him to have the elements of Justice League Doom Batman, which is I do want him to have the knowledge and the profile and every other member of the Justice League. Because I think that's one of the coolest things they ever put in that, even in the animated series and then in the movie. So that Batman, again, would not be 25. That Batman would be 40, exactly. 45. He would have taken the time to learn everyone's weaknesses and be re that he has to me, like has to be an element of this, of this Justice League Batman if you do it. These are the options that they have to do to, you know, to, to make something Fantastic. Go ahead and let Matt Reeves do his thing and do something totally different, but still let it be Batman. Um, I do think they're making a little bit of a mess of it, though, and, and that's a recurring theme in our DC discussions. I think of the Batman that are on the table, Keaton's the one. Ke Keaton is the one that I think you can work with if you don't want to hire anyone else. I think expanding and re running it back with Affleck, I think would be a mistake. Not because Ben Affleck is bad as Batman. That's nothing to do with his, it's because of what else Ben Affleck links to in the DC universe. They, they got to, we'll talk about, they got to get clear of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just, I'm sorry. Like, I think everyone who was associated with that era, the longer they're hanging around, the tougher it's going to be for DC to really get a clean slate. That's not a knock on a lot of these actors. It just is what it is. So that's why I said, if you're going to use an existing Batman, I think Michael Keaton's the only one you have. Otherwise, you got to go find another one. I'm talking to us, Warner Brothers. Yeah. We'll answer. talk about that more in a <laughs> bit, but yeah. Um, the next hurdle is a hurdle, Brian, that we've been talking about for months already. Figuring out what to do with the Flash. I've been asking this question since the Flash's debut because we cannot continue with this. But it seems as they as if they are following the steps, the twelve steps <laughs> to get to the finish line. You know, it's just. All this, oh, uh, Ezra had a good meeting with Warner Brothers. That's Warner Brothers doing what they can to keep him nice and happy, smiling. We're going to keep on doing it. And after this, and when it's over, bye-bye. So rap. But until I, until, I hear, uh, until I hear that Ezra signed a contract, I don't believe that after this movie, and I hear the movie's dope, Brian. Everyone says this. Everyone says this movie has the highest testing score since the Dark Knight of any That's DC movie. Crazy. How is that possible, by the way? But anyway, go ahead. Is it because of him or is it because of Keaton again? Because Keaton, the writing. Actually, I heard Affleck is a big part of reason why people like I, it. I, I heard that too. I heard that too. But I've said always that this movie was going to be the reset that reset that the WB wants. Let's see. But Ezra Miller, I mean, like to your point, Ezra, this is Ezra Miller's career, right? This movie is literally the remains of his career. He won't be back in the Harry Potter franchise. He won't be the Flash after this movie. It is one and done. So his future employability in Hollywood basically depends on can he stay out of the headlines for the wrong reasons for the next year and can this movie live up to what is now becoming some building hype that it's 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 a great watch you know I, we look hollywood is filled with weird types so i would never say like someone's unemployable because we've seen lots of people do lots of shady stuff and come back 
But where we're at right now is there just isn't any evidence this, this individual can go another calendar year without doing something really awful, at least yeah. allegedly. And that's what WB is betting on. Cause the article in variety does basically say he's not promoting the film. They're not promoting the film. They've written that off. So this is a, yeah. you go to rehab, you try to get right. You kind of come, try to come correct publicly. And then you disappear until this movie comes out. That's the yeah. deal they're trying to yeah. bet on. We'll see. I don't, I'm still betting against that, but that's, that seems like, let's put it this way. That seems like a tall order based upon what we've had, but. Yeah. The next hurdle, figuring out what to do after the flash and Aquaman and the lost kingdom. We've spoken about the flash. It's over. No more as we after this. They're going to obviously recast and find someone to take his place in future films. Aquaman. The funnier one. Remember, it made a billion dollars. I don't know how much they're spending on this one. I'm pretty sure it's over 150. Well, the budget? Oh, the budget's over 200 for sure. Look at that. So I think I think after this movie, Brian, perhaps Moa's gonna chill out for a while or perhaps do more movies. I don't know. I mean, he's still gonna be doing Dune. And he I think he really has to uh, assess his career in terms of taking certain roles that are not repetitive because in a lot of the stuff that i've seen yeah, of him, I agree. it's just another another person playing the same guy over and over again he's a bro basically yeah he's always yeah, a bro yeah. right like whatever he is that's kind of the role he's he's being asked to do yeah um but i, I i'm expecting that after this um that'll be his last um uh, appearance as Aquaman in Ooh. DC. Wow, theater. that's bold. I actually don't think it'll be that, but I think the structure is going to change. Um, clearly, David Zaslav is concerned about this movie. There's the uncertainty of what to do with Amber Heard's part. One day we hear it's two minutes. One day we hear it's 20. Who knows? Um, you know, this clearly does sound like a project where the star was given a lot of latitude after a big debut this sounds like he had a hand in the script he had a hand in the subject matter he had a hand in the tone so it's on him and it doesn't sound all that promising especially if your new boss is basically pushing this movie back a full year to retool it so my thought would be, I don't think there's much of a chance this actually exceeds the box office of the first, which then will lead to, if he comes, like, and I do think he will come back. He said he wants to keep doing this part as long as the audience is there for it. But I think if there is a round three, the studio is going to have a tight leash on it. He ain't going to be calling the shots in the third one. He's going to be taking orders. And that's going to be, be like, and if you don't like that, we'll go get another Aquaman. Brian, the, the, the only reason why I say I don't think he'll be back, I don't think he may want to come back. He hasn't looked very... Like, if you saw his interviews at Bando last year, he looked like he didn't want to be there. In fact, most of them didn't look like they didn't want to be there. Well, that, that ties to the elephant in the room again, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. But he doesn't, so, but to, but he doesn't have... Where's his other hit though, right? That he's the headliner of. So his, his show on Apple's ending, that's like a modest hit, C. He's yeah. the villain in a fast movie, but you know, that he's, not, he's not the fast, and, he's not the franchise. He's, he's, he's a guest star for one film. Other than that, what else has he done or is he doing that is like repeatable or big box? Nothing, like he's Aquaman. That's what gets him paid. That's what makes him famous. 
So I think he's going to be very reluctant to give that up, even if it means he has to give ground in terms of creative or control the next time around, unless he, he hits it big with some other character before Aquaman 3 rolls around. I ask you, Brian, let's say they, after the Flash and Aquaman, obviously we're going to get something about the Bat, um, the Batman verse. Uh, Matt Reeves uh, universe but in terms of what happens after you get this reset what do you think happens after that what again elephant in the room I think I think all of these actors who David Zaslav inherited in the Justice League are on a show me basis Think about it. He he already he's out from under the flash after the one move max one movie. He's out from under it. Doesn't have the actor anymore. He's contractually, as best we can tell, out from under Superman. Seems like Affleck, we don't know what that contract structure is, like how many appearances were left from the original deal, but like Ben Affleck doesn't seem all that keen on like he seems like he seems to like doing the I'll do four days and get some money. He doesn't really seem like he wants to come back and do what he originally intended to do, which was write and star in his own Batman. Yeah. And he just got remarried again. So I don't think he'd have to twist his arm to be like, hey, Ben, thanks. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know. <laughs> um, so you're left with, and obviously Ray Fisher's persona non grata around WB. So that's a non-issue. So you're kind of left with Jason Momoa and Gal Gadot. And I just think... One of them's coming off a dud and her star has kind of taken a step down since, since Wonder Woman 84. And the other, you're kind of hearing like this movie's, you know, may have some real issues to it. I think if they both misstep, I think David Zaslav's not shedding a tear where he's like, great, I don't have to pay, I don't have to pay you 15 to $20 million and I can, I can officially close the book this, yeah. on this black eye for the studio yeah. you tell me he's not gonna be like great i'm cool like, yeah i but you know they go out and they make a billion dollars with the next move yeah you got to bring them back because money talks but, yeah of course right i what am i missing here I, I just don't understand why he's not sitting there being like the sooner we can get truly into the clear the better off we are and patents in the bad verse don't apply to that because they are their own next chapter that just started and everyone liked it and there's no reason to mess with it. Yeah, yeah. The next hurdle. Navigating established fiefdoms at Warner Brothers, HBO Max and WBTV. He like, unlike Kevin over at Disney, he has his own thing that he does. He is the guy. Here, however, at WB, you would have to go through a number of people and you have to sort of, uh, I guess, use your choix de vie to, 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 to make everybody comfortable. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and everybody's on the same page and it's like, Managing egos is not, is not, it's, it's difficult, very difficult. Brian, your thoughts on, on, on how to navigate to get to from, from, uh, from inception to getting something out the door. But this, but this is at the heart of some of WB's corporate problems is that they've allowed all these different fiefdoms to be set up. They've allowed individual creators and individual subsets of businesses to kind of become their own animal mm -hmm. you know and we've heard we heard one of david zaslav's calling cards was he hated bureaucracy he hated levels of infrastructure so i don't know i just have this image of him as like de niro and the untouchables with the bat walking around the table talking about the team that's pretty much what i feel like he probably thinks mm -hmm. um so i think you're gonna and look he's under pressure to cut a lot of costs and the easy way to cut a lot of costs, 
fire executives. They're expensive, man. Media, they make a ton of money. Like, but divisions, that's what's happening, right? HBO Max has been gutted. Like, there's one streamer, and it's the it's Discovery. Like, that's basically what's left. Right. Um, so I actually think that problem will get sorted out, and it won't be the DC person's responsibility to navigate that. It'll be Zaslav's responsibility to cut that red tape down to where you're like, all right, here's the two or maybe it's maybe it's Zaslav himself, Casey Bloys at HBO Max, and then the DC person, and that's it. Like, I don't think you're going to be. I actually don't think this is going to be that person's problem within like three years. Okay. And I believe the last one, Brian, which is a difficult one, winning over the fans. I mean, I think we've laid out enough good ideas, Brian, that you can go with it. And the because at the end of the day, Brian, fans only want to see their these superheroes that we've known for years and years and years be definitive in who they are on screen and not just pieces of them. I think that's how you win over fans. I think a lot of fans are just happy seeing them on screen for the most part. But at the same time, there are many like myself, who don't see that representation of those characters that I've seen in comic books. And forget about the animation. Those are dope, right? But from the comic books to live action. For, the, for live action, there's always been someone's interpretation. The closest we've gotten to a... a, a I feel anyway to from straight out of the comic book Batman is the Batman. Yeah. And I think that's what they have to get back to. And, you know, going going after these young guns, going up to new people, not these big name stars. We don't I, we don't need them. Because it is a distraction from the characters. Your thoughts, Brian? How do they win the fans over? Well, I think it, a lot of it will depend on which fan base they really want to cater to. I think you know Marvel does it really well. I shouldn't say that they do. Marvel does have that challenge uh, to some extent, but DC has a certain fan base element that wants things a very certain way. Yeah, and they're very loud. And they make the most headlines. But the, the box office reality would tell you they are not the majority yeah. of the movie going audience. So if you're trying to build the broadest base possible, I think the number one thing I would tell you is keep it simple. Keep it simple. If you start trying to outsmart yourself with these characters, it's not going to work. Like, yeah. The Batman worked in some ways because it was kind of simple. Like Matt Reeves had a theme and he, he hammered that theme for three hours, three hours and $800 million worth of people said, we love this. Mm -hmm. Like it was still a swing, but he basically said, I am going to create a detective, a murder mystery with a serial killer and the detective happens to be Batman. Like that's a one sentence pitch to a studio <laughs> that turned into this movie. If your pitch is like, well, we're going to do this and we're going to go to this world and we're going to let you've already lost. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. It's like we, we talk about some of the great movies in, in history. And I remember I heard somebody kind of jokingly say like, what was the pitch for predator? And the guy said, it's Arnold and an alien in the jungle and they fight. <laughs> Run. Like what <laughs> studio executive in 1987 is like not saying yes to that, right? But it, it shows you that when you think through these heroes and these characters, they already have such a following. Keep it simple. I'm with you. This era of Hollywood, the IP makes the star. The star doesn't make the IP, right? Like, like 
the, like who walks around being like, what's the next project that Chris Evans is going to make? No offense. He's, he, he did a great job as Steve Rogers, but like, I'm not sitting there checking his IMDb to see what's he working on. Captain America made Chris Evans a star. Chris Evans didn't make Captain America yeah. a household name. Exactly. Yo. Right. So, exactly. yeah. I mean, like, and Pattinson's been a great actor on the indie circuit long before he went into Tenant and then came into the Batman. But again, like, how many people out there are like, whatever Rob Pattinson's doing, I'm there opening night. I don't think that's a huge number, as good an actor as he might be. Yeah, yeah. But perfect blend between director vision, the passion, and you get his version of Bruce Wayne, which is different, but I think it was compelling. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, that this was a you know a, a great article for you. I have this time I put I'm putting stuff in the comment in the in the description, so you guys can check out the article. Um, a lot of things to do, Brian, for WB and Zasloff. A lot of things to figure out, and this is not going to be solved overnight. Obviously, but it's going to be a few years before we start seeing that ascension up um right now it was just down 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 it it's tough man right we're we're in the mess we're in the mess phase and it's like it's hard to have hope it's hard yeah. to have hope yeah but let us know what you guys think in the comment section below um if you agree with us uh, um all these hurdles that um Zaslov has to overcome to uh get the dc these dc uh characters to the level that the mcu characters uh are um they should have in my opinion they should have been there a long time ago justice lee should have made three billion dollars you know and it, it, they, they just we got to try something new and we'll we'll be discussing that uh, a little bit later but that's our show for today um hit that like and subscribe button and then we'll, we'll see you next time on the nerd gem report